Hello, everybody. Did you know that we have a Patreon page? Because after yeah, because <laughs> after all, the people you are listening to are a bunch of hardworking, sad, lonely, <laughs> downtrodden, lacking in money, poor, destitute. We work so many jobs, many of which hours are spent staring into our screens, trying to go unnoticed, researching for this very show. If you could please dig into your heart, or more importantly, deep. Deep, deep down into your wallets and submitify a mere five dollars a month to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash the whole rabbit, where we have a few beautiful, wonderful, generous, and charmed with eternal good luck subscribers already who have subscribed under the category of money, of which there is only one. Please, if you like this show even a little bit and have five dollars a month to spare, please go there. And submitify your money for us. Now, on to the show. Yeah. 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 That's pretty good. I would just add where, where you don't just, you know. Where you don't just listen to the show. You, know? you pull out your credit card and give us $5 a month. No, you don't just subscribe to our Patreon page. You get the Fnord report. Yeah, we don't even tell you what you get. Yeah, you already. Screw that. You get you get goodies. And you know what? Like, a, whoa! I got all these goodies. You know what a Fnord report is? No, you don't. But you have to be a patron. But if you if you were a patron, you'd get a Fnord report, and it would tell you all the secrets. It would report all all the Fnords. If you want to know what a Fnord is, listen to our first episode. Yeah, you really gotta be a. Subscriber. Or Google it, and then you get uh you get all your shows like three days early, and also one extra show a month, which we will be recording this week. So if you subscribe now, you will be getting that very first extra show. Yeah, for for July. And what are we talking about today, Mr. Anderson? Wait, what are we again? Oh, who are we? What do we do? That's right. My name's Luke. Luke Madrid. And I'm Andrew Haskins. And we are the hosts of. The whole rabbit, where we don't just tell the rabbit to n- make an intention and, and scribble some lines and wank off to its sigil. No, no, we put it in the death posture for hours at a time, inducing magical trance through sleeplessness, fasting, and exhaustion, gazing in hypnotic trance, and then through sensory excitement, emotional arousal, pain, torture, flagellation, chanting the right way of. Walking? We're, we're, we're talking about... You got lost there, dude. That's what you do in Chaos Magic. You go no, out... We're talking about Chaos Magic. That is what we are talking about today. If you can read and click the subject of the show, which is, in fact, Chaos Magic. Yeah, because there's no, there's no, like, letters before we start. Like, so we don't really know until until it's, like, We just make it page. up off the top of our brains. No, no, we actually... I actually read a good. You actually do research. I did. I read quite a bit of the Psychic Bible. We've we've both read Lieber Null by Peter Carroll quite a few times. Yeah, that was like the first introduction into magic was Lieber Null, and this was in eighth grade when I was reading it. And so like you got introduced to Lieber Null in eighth grade. Oh yeah, it totally screwed up all of my life. Would you say Lieber (laughs) Null is a good place to start with chaos magic? Yeah, if you're getting into chaos magic, literally, K- Lieber Null is like the best way to go about it. The problem was, as suggested by its name, Book Zero. Yeah, the problem was though that they don't really tell you how to go about it. They just like, okay, you just use your magical skills t- to do whatever you want. That's Psychonaut though, right? You know? That's more Psychonaut. Lieber Null actually has some stuff in it. It has a few things, but look it, it doesn't. Look at- Look at look at Lieber M M M. It right doesn't in the beginning. break down the reasoning for their their the the small amount of structure that they do have, okay. which is a little bit more kabbalistic. That if you like learned your Kabbalah and your uh, read your Aleister Crowley, you totally get chaos magic and what they're going for. Look, party wizard. Well, they make it. They it, jump off of claims that Aleister Crowley was saying to like ground their assumptions. Okay, well, just. To jump right in. All right, let's go. You start with mind control. It's the first section of Lieber MMM. And now, now, this isn't controlling other people's minds. This is controlling your mind, as well as other people's minds. Sure, but first you have to start with yours before yeah, you yeah. can control other people's. If you can control your mind, it's just a matter of, like... So we're digging into Lieber Null by Peter Carroll. 
He's a really compelling writer. Or Lieber MMM. And there are certain books mm. within the books. So Lieber mmm. Yeah, Lieber mmm. So this is a course in the exercise in the disciplines of magical trance. Dot, dot, dot. It goes on from there. Dot, dot, dot. It goes on from there. We're just going to stop there. Okay, mind control. To work magic effectively, the ability to concentrate the attention must be built up until the mind can enter a trance-like condition. This is accomplished in a number of stages. Absolute motionlessness of the body. Regulation of breathing. Stopping of thoughts, concentration on sound, concentration on objects, and concentration on mental images. Yeah, so basically this is like almost like Franz Barden style like magical training. So this is like some old school hermetic practices, just kind of like bare bones, like kind of like stripped of like all of their regalia and I, all their all their, their themes. If I just listened to Jason Louv on the Duncan Trussell Family Hour, and he's like, you know, if you can sit still for an hour and meditate without anything for an hour, then we'll talk about magic. So this is very much reflecting the sentiment found here in Lieber Null. In fact, uh, the whole Jedi thing, you got to learn control. Control, you must learn control before you start learning anything. So to burst your bubble, chaos magic isn't just like flinging your semen against the wall and praying to demons. Although we will get there. We will. We, <laughs> yeah, it does get there eventually. You know, just. But it's not just that. It's not just that. You have to at least have some discipline. And in fact, that's like the first line of the psychic Bible. Like after the personal intro, personal message, it says. The temple strives to end personal laziness and engender discipline. That's the first sentence in the Psychic Bible. That's some straight-up Jordan B. Peterson stuff See, right there. So as much as you want to, uh, you know, go go full moron with this stuff, which tends, which, which is, is the like tendency. A lot of the people, a lot of the people want to just go full retard. It is a tendency in the chaos magic scene to just be like, yeah. I'm going to summon all the things and put them up my butt. It's like, I'm going like, to put Korans on up my butt. <laughs> yeah, you know, and you just, you just don't come back from that. Well, like, you come, you go, I mean, you might come from that. But, like, I don't know. It always seems like all the the chaos magicians, it just seemed like neo-paganism after dark, you know. It's like, we want Pan looking all, like, demonic. It's a freaky like, scene. It's a lot of fun, though. We want some hot bitches with, like, devil horns and, you know. This like, is the problem with goat horns and stuff. You know, it's just, it got cool, but it's like, it was like, why does it always have to be dark stuff? Like, why can't chaos be, like, just, like, burning man, you know? Because that points out the fact that chaos magic is just new age. That's true, but isn't isn't it new age? It's just new age without crystals, right? Okay, well, this is... We don't want to get into this part of the story yet, but it's it's more punk rock. Okay, so it's, it's DIY punk rock. It's you know, the fuck, punk rock. fuck your magic elitism. Okay, it's Alistair punk. Crowley with your nose in your air and the Israel Regardi with your fancy schmancy pantsy. It's really like a fuck you to that and being like, yeah, we spell of with an O V. Okay, like it's just it's okay. So it's punk rock magic. It's magic for people that drink in pubs and listen to punk rock and, you know, do what they want to do instead of hoity-toity, so this is fancy like the, schmancy pinky in the air magicians. So this is like the inversion or like the, the, the wrongful uh, recitation of Aleister Crowley's whole do it thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Well, one of my favorite things when I'm getting it's into like just do what you feel like when I'm chaos magicking out is to go on YouTube and look up the chaos sphere experience, which if I remember, I'm going to put a link to it in the description, God willing, or if someone calls me out on it, then I'll post it. But yeah, the chaos sphere experience is a narration from a cassette tape in the eighties, which has a whole hour, but what you find on the YouTube is about 10 minutes or so. And it's like chaos magic is, ultra sinister as most magic systems employ a set of moral dogmas upon their adherence but chaos magic does no such thing which is true yeah they just like all right here are the here are the, and the then tools it, and then it bounces the don't off cut and, your hand off they don't even tell you not to cut your hand off they just go you probably they think you you're not going to want to cut your hand off or they're, something and they're like well if you do you there's probably a thing to learn how to sew it back on but it might not work good luck yeah, yeah, you might but then break the, through. The, but what I was saying, <laughs> the, the chaos sphere, sorry to keep cutting you off, the chaos sphere experience is like, 
you know, do what thou wilt should be the whole of the law. Being like, do what you, do what you want to do, which we've already covered in the lame episode is. Yeah, it's not tr- Not how it was meant in the in the beginning. It's not a Bart Simpson do what you feel like. It's a you will figure out why you why you incarnated kind of deal. That's more, what the true will was supposed to be. More to do with your dharma. But the Christians will tell you like that's the proper one, and they're the people actually following through on what Alistair Crowley was talking about. <laughs> well, well, sure. And Alistair Crowley says that they're the ones following through on what the Christians... Uh, you, we were talking about the, that today in the car, how Alistair Crowley didn't want to discard everything that was Christianity. He wanted to reform it and reshape it and evolve it. And Yeah, yeah, because in his workings, he's talking more about like taking out all the parts that are superfluous... And only keeping the good stuff, like keeping the, the, the yogic practices of Buddhism and then um, getting rid of like the idol worship of Christianity. And uh, I forget what they had for Islam, but I'm sure they had one. I can't remember which Lieber it is, but Aleister Crowley has a really great text about yoga. And that's pretty much where chaos magic s- jumps off from, is is basically what Aleister Crowley was teaching us about yoga. So it's good that we moved the conversation there. Yeah, because this was my big trip about like, okay, so I started with chaos magic. And I was like, okay, but you're not telling me really like what the things are or the associations of anything. What do you, okay, what do you mean by that, Andrew? Can you, like, expound on that? Okay, so you, they give you, like, a couple things, and they're, like, they got planetary symbols, and they got, like, some other stuff, but they're not really explaining, like, a categorization of why these symbols correspond to certain things, right? And that's something, like, you get more in, like, a classical magical training in, like, a, a formalized system. And then, so that I couldn't really get. And then I learned about Kabbalah. And then I'm like, okay, that's cool. And then I started really reading Aleister Crowley. And what he was talking about, to me, was like, oh, this is, he's just talking about chaos magic. This guy's like way before chaos magic times, just talking about chaos magic. Talking about doing the thing that works, regardless of the deity or pantheon or morality also the whole thing about not taking any god or transmission or thing ultra seriously basically not taking it to its extreme not becoming dogmatic or deluded by the vision and um, basically having some skepticism towards your experience in some way and realizing that it's going to evolve and change over your life and so you're not like worshiping these gods and you're you're more like using them as psychological pomps and tools. I mean, he even had a practice he developed where you like chant the Hebrew god names backwards up the tree, thus like undoing like any influence of like the reality or like the forces of creation. So like this guy was doing chaos magic with Kabbalah, you know. He was just making up his own way of doing things using their techniques. Like creating his own personal pantheon and then building it outward. So I guess we don't want to get too into the weeds about Aleister Crowley yeah, and we're Chaos Magic. Too, too far into the AC But territory. he was pretty punk rock in his own way. He went through the Golden Dawn system. It's like, boom, I'm publishing the secrets. He, he was publishing the Sex Magic secrets, which got him in charge of the OTO in one way or the other. And. Well, and there's also the thing in Psychonaut, they say that they are the the uh spiritual disciples of uh the aa like they are the the real thing now who do, who says that in peter carroll and uh Lieber Null. it's like in the very beginning that sounds a lot like what the temple of set says right yeah they all say that like everyone's which, claiming on being the real aa which the of, real order which of course just makes alistair crowley seem more legit but okay well here's some things i do want to mention that are in alignment with alistair crowley I didn't want to jump right to the Psychic Bible. I wanted to talk about... Um, well, you wanted to open up with just passages without any anybody knowing yeah, what, what you're Yeah, because that's funny. Reading. That's funny. Okay. It's so, funny to you. Okay, so the so how is chaos magic related to Thelema is where we've moved the conversation yes, to. Luke, so, how is chaos magic related to Thelema? Thank you, Andrew. So, the temple strives to end personal laziness and engender discipline. Boom. That's that could have been straight out of Crowley's mouth, right? Well, you gotta pick up the damn burden and run with it. Thanks, Thank God. Thanks, Mr. Peterson. To focus the will You're on welcome. 
Save your goddamn father from the belly of the whale. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> to focus the will on one's true desires in the belief gathered from experience that this maximizes and makes happen all those things that one wants in every area of life. Explore daily your deepest desires, fantasies, and motives, gradually focusing on what you would like to happen in a perfect world, in a perfect situation. This is becoming all Abraham. Taken away all restrictions and practical considerations of what you'd really want, then decide to try and do it. The mere visualization of that true goal begins the process and makes it happen. Clean out the trappings and debris of compromise of what you've been told is reasonable for a person in your circumstances. Be clear in admitting all your real desires. Discard irrelevancies. This is where I'd have to agree with you, Andrew. That's a lot like Abraham. That is a lot like New Age thinking. No, like, that's I, all I, I heard was, I heard that straight, like, you're saying it, but I was, like, straight up hearing in my mind, Ab like, Abraham Hicks. Like, whoever the, the channels Abraham is, like, just, just saying all those words. I don't want to say something really dumb or it's going to, like, draw the wrath because oh, I, I not take... the wrath. Yeah, right? I mean... I, I there's no I wouldn't get the wrath I, I, there's no reason to believe I would but just my that's my own fears and projections but okay so I take a class on magic.me by Jason Liu now Jason Liu was taught magic by Genesis Peorage whose words I was just reading from the psychic bible I didn't finish reading the intro but it goes on to say well, once you're focused on yourself internally the external aspects of your life will fall into place. They have to. St skeptics will say they don't simply believe the psychic process works, but it does. It's the key to the temple. I I'm sorry. That sounds a lot like New Age thinking to me. That sounds more like Abraham than Aleister Crowley. The part where it gets to be like Aleister Crowley is like, we attempt to commune with spirits to be friends of the human spirit. Um, we revel in mystery and surprise. We bury ourselves in challenges and dreams. We embrace all possibilities and impossibilities with joy and excitement. That's a lot like what they call for in the book of the law is to like embrace the challenges of life and the good parts of life equally and to like really get into it and get messy with it. Right? That's that's a lot of like the message of the book of the law, I thought. It seems like the most humanist freaking attitude I've ever heard. You know, it's all like, look, you got to get into your your world and your life and not deny yourself and you know just like get out there let's read a little more because i think our funnest episodes are the ones where we read so um to of finish course you do you like reading well i mean it fills time and it tells people like right from the source document what we're studying and it lets them form their own you know here we go yeah that's good that's a good point we accept the true nature of life the way the world is flexible and shifting in flux every moment shaped by parallel levels that accept contradiction and inconsistency as inviolate qualities that generate mystery and mastery we direct ourselves wherever we choose to go with joy and abandon a new era of the magical interpretation of the world and existing in it is coming an interpretation in terms of will and imagination by contact with the intuition and instinct do you want to be part of a world of sleeping people? Do you want to imbibe the drug of the commonplace? Will you be forever addicted to self-restriction? So it, it's calling you to wake up and embrace your true desires, which they're asserting has something to do with your true will, I think is the underlying notion here. Or maybe that we don't even have a true will is maybe partially asserted here as well. Our enemies are flat three-dimensional our enemies are continuity and coherence our enemies are restriction and confinement guilt and fear material direction and fact our enemies are because the psychic bible was the written ass it, it was the philosophical text to temple of the psychic youth which was a counterpart to psychic tv which was genesis p orge's project that evolved after throbbing gristle well like and the funny thing is Gen genesis peorage had like the same sort of treatment that alistair crowley had oh absolutely like, like by the by the british media and he was totally like oh he's corrupting the youth he's just like this terrible uh anarchist like he's gonna destroy civilization and and he would he just thought it was the funniest thing because he's like they think i'm all these things and i can barely make rent <laughs> yeah well are we talking about alistair crowley we're we talking about genesis genesis 
like we actually have like video footage of him being interviewed you know and saying these things and he's all like yeah they're just you know I, I can't believe some people think I'm this horrible monster and you know I can hardly get anything done and they think I'm doing it all <laughs> I remember being very fascinated with how the Temple of Psychic Youth did their magic. They, on the 23rd of the month, on the 23rd hour, 11 p.m., they would basically go into, uh, they'd do some winking magic mixed with meditation, excitatory. They have all these different methods of attaining. They would meditate. They would masturbate. Yeah, there's there's techniques that are outlined in Libranol, which, of course, came later, but they were using back then. Motionlessness, breathing, non-thinking. Entering magical trances, uh, object concentration, and you know mixing that with the orgasm, and focusing on their intent and their sigil and their artwork at the place of orgasm, and creating artwork in that state of mind, that exci- excitatory state of mind, and mixing it all together, and then I guess they would send in their stuff to the temple, and the temple had different regional outposts, and then they had a big central location they would send all their stuff there and it would get put in a vault and who knows what they did after that but the idea was is they would those intentions would become real and become true and that was all part of the ritual and part of their thing was building group energy and this really scared the shit out of the british government i'm pretty sure i if i i had trouble finding this again but i know i've seen it in the past where Scotland Yard is like raiding the temple and like confiscating like bizarre taxidermied cats and weird chaos magic artwork and stuff just bizarre random like, artifacts you, you can't know have them doing magic no nah, because they're it's messing up the grid man yeah they're messing up their control grid they can't talk to their demons as easily genesis peorge is sometimes referred to as the grand person of industrial music through throbbing gristle genesis terrible name genesis well it was a terrible a, name like throbbing gristle it is it, yeah it's a it's a British slang for, you know, an erect penis, which was part of the original download that Genesis got on a trip to Wales with his family, where he received a series of messages and symbols and ideas um, in an out-of-body state, which resulted in compiling three journals full of material, which became the inspiration for the Coom transmissions, which is the word that... Genesis Peorge kept hearing over and over in his head and that be you know and of course the cum transmissions are cum transmissions basically it was like a like a live art and it got some public funding that was a big problem for Genesis Peorge while they were in Britain was getting public funding for these far out exhibits because part of their whole philosophy was putting stuff out there that you're not supposed to see so like they had used tampons and pornographic images and stuff that you know the english consider just obscene this and they might even back, have laws against but this was back when this was actually edgy yeah back in the hippie days man like like this was way before nowadays where that's just normie they he made it normal like literally like he was the first guy he was on avant-garde with it and now it's like that's what art that's what people think art is now they think that's what it's got to be. It's got to be just something gross or something stupid or something just tasteless. I think there is something to be said for that. I don't want to throw Genesis under the bus because if you listen to anything Genesis says for any period of time, it's very like wise. And it, and it, even if it's punk rock, and I don't, I really don't like a whole lot of punk music to begin with. Um, I don't hate it or anything, but it's just not my scene. But like some of that music, man, it just doesn't. I'm just not about it. You know, it's just not my. It's just not my bag. And if you go a little bit into the psychic Bible, so after a while, it starts to some of it starts to be incomprehensible, or the language is so weird about it. It gets too dense, basically. That's not to discount the impact that Genesis had on our culture. Like I'm a DJ, so I kind of owe my left nut to Genesis for making cut up such a integral part of music and even sample based music owes some of its lineage to genesis and even my dj name hack rabbit is a direct reference to the cut up method which geisen taught to genesis and 
uh, it's so yeah i agree with some of what you're saying but at the same time like i think it's had a good influence on our culture and not all, especially like the music that genesis went on to do is not all the same it's all very it's gone many different directions and that's the ultimate message of chaos magic is a, of being an individual which is paradoxically they talk about this being an individual is not having one distinct personality your social personality it's being able to accommodate many different personalities and to think in a democratic way amongst all those personalities and different ideas and ideologues in your own self like in inside out you know i guess so but isn't that sort of what magic is is like you you're you call upon the different spheres of the planets and you hang out with these different consciousnesses and you learn yeah, from them yeah the idea is to like absorb the different aspects of different consciousnesses to make yourself a well-rounded whole like you may not be into punk rock, right? But right. what, what a, you're totally forgetting about punk rock Luke. Like punk rock Luke is probably fun to hang out with. Punk rock, pro, punk rock Luke probably drinks. Pro, yeah. Punk rock Luke could probably probably smoke cigarettes. Yeah. You know, punk rock Luke. I bet punk rock Luke would be really fun to hang out with, dude. Like. And so but yeah, I don't, but I wouldn't know because you you just keep him in a cage somewhere. Okay, so let's talk <laughs> about the value of chaos magic right here then. So why is chaos magic good? Because if I was a bigger chaos magician, maybe one night of the month I would be that person. Like you just go to a show at Ventura Theater, and then I wouldn't be like, oh, I can't smoke a cigarette; it'll make my sinuses clog up. I'd be like, yeah, give me a fucking cigarette. Give me a fag, mate. <laughs> yeah, and I just you know, and I'd be drinking. Swilling and being a badass for a night, and then maybe the next making out with chicks, and then the next day I would go back to being just a Buddhist monk, you know, or I would go to being a straight and proper working person. Yeah, and you that, just put on your your suit and tie, and that's chaos magic. That's what chaos magic is about. It's about expanding your horizons, being more of a person, and having more experiences and growing from them. So it's is Burning Man chaos magic? Oh hell yeah, Burning Man is chaos magic AF. If you ask me. Well, like, why don't you tell me how Burning Man's chaos magic since you've been and I'm broke? Oh, I don't know if that's a fun topic to think about, but here's the thing. Things see, okay, okay, I guess. Not little, personal, the, do like something okay. more objective, like so, an objective take. Like in the chaos sphere experience, chaos magic and chaos energy is experienced when you're on the edge. And a lot of Burning Man is learning how to have experiences, oftentimes group experiences that are pushing you outside of your comfort zone and are necessarily including you in an actual action or a ritual or an actual thing. So inclusion. And in Chaos Magic, you're not really encouraged to just read books about magic or be an armchair magician. You actually have to go out and live your life. Otherwise, you, you're not really being a magician. It says like you have to even like go beyond the boundaries of like what society says you're allowed to do to go find what you are, go find yourself or whatever. And Burning Man's a lot like that. It's like, here you are, you're like removed from your normal circumstances, you're in an altered place, all the rules are different, all the, everything's different, and then you can kind of be who you want to be. It's like, oh, I want to be a muffin today, I'm a muffin, you know? And you just dress like a muffin, and, and everyone's like, yeah. what up, muffin? And that's, that's life at Burning Man. Uh, you know, that was, that was very much the world that Genesis wanted to unleash on the rest of the world, and wish i wish genesis had been successful i wish that whole thing had been successful i wish we were living in some deadhead magical 60s techno techno democracy thing of the future but we're more living in a, a techno fascism now it's all about everything is monetized where in burning man like almost almost nothing is monetized well like okay so speaking of that so like you're you're thinking it should be more of like an ecstatic, ecstatic sort of like live and let be sort of like that aligns. Thing. Yeah, that aligns with the philosophy of chaos magic. We need like we need the straits to keep the the power running and the water flowing and everything. You know. Sure, I think a proper chaos magician would be able to be that person three days of the week and then go back to being a weirdo the rest of the time, or even like they're like straight laced at work and then when they're off they just yeah like you know, doing crazy shit, like no. eating mushrooms and shit. And that's what the psychic Bible seems to say is possible because it's about having discipline. And part of that discipline is learning to 
push yourself to those places and come back alive, you know, come back and integrate from those experiences. And the coming back is, is a lot like the solve and recombine, you know, you so, dissolve, so you, you dissolve yourself in the experience and then you put yourself back together and then you come out with a new mutation, you know, hail the new flesh as, as Dick Moo says, DKMU.org. Check them out. If you're looking to just, you can just check out their literature and just say you're a member and bing, bing, boom, you're in an esoteric order, you know? Oh yeah. And like what, what about like chaos cliques? Oh man, we won't talk too much about that. We sort of, uh, chaos cliques. Um, well, I'm technically a published chaos magic magician person because I have the Ace of Swords card in the the Chaos Magic Tarot deck of cards, which the CMG group on Facebook created oh a few years back. I don't remember, but I believe it was Paul Knott did the compiling and well, I did a lot of, of the organizational work too. So like you have more than one card in the deck. No, no, I only did one. No, I think you got two. No, I didn't get two. I think you did. No, I only did one. No, I only did one. You what? What about the pentacles? You have the six of pentacles. No, no, I don't have the six. I have the oh yeah, I have the six. That's all. See, you don't know. No, no, no. I got the six, and that's it. I don't think so. I think you got one more in you're, here. You're crazy. Maybe I, I think... am crazy. I'm from the other timeline. No, I was gonna try to do two, but you know what like, timeline I'm I'm from? Where someone the, took it. Where Damon Wayans and Scary Movie says I see white people. That's the fucking timeline I'm from. I'm from that same timeline, dude. And I didn't get I didn't get a second one. I tried to get a second one. That's not you. No, that's not okay, me. Okay, give me a minute. No, that's not me. I wish. I wish I got the magician. That's not you? No. Oh, okay. Oh, I know who that is. That's, um... No, I don't know who that is. I can't remember their name. Sorry. He's a very intelligent guy. That's not yours either? No. Thir- f- wands? It made, like, when I saw those, it made me feel better about my art, you know? Some of them are really good, though. Some of them are really, really good. And this was really cool because it was a Chaos Magic group and, like, it was crowdsourced on the, the art for a tarot deck. Like, 78 people had, like, a chance to, to draw and, or, like, make their art immortalized in a tarot deck. We were lucky enough to get those. So, like, we're kind of, like, actually, like, into the Chaos vibe even though, like, we're more into more traditional ceremonial magic right now. We're still actually, like, published Chaos Magicians. Technically. Technically. Like, I guess you're this, right, Andrew. I one? guess I thought the magician card was your card as well. Yeah. Or I just, I can't believe it. I thought you had two cards in here. Yeah, I was going for two cards, but like, that was the thing. When I saw that one and the one you also thought was mine. Um, it does look like the way you draw. Yeah, and it made me feel way better because I thought my, my thing looked stupid. Well, I did the Ace of Swords and you did the Six of Pentacles. And it's pretty cool. Yeah, and... I think it was good affirmation for Chaos Magic. I don't think you... I think the deck was a limited edition thing. You could look it up. The CMG Tarot, I'm pretty sure is what it's called. I, I'm, I'm a little disappointed on the back of the of the deck. I thought there was going to be Dogi on it. Yeah, back. I thought there was going to be the Dogi. BS, dude. I can't believe it's not the yeah. Dogi. Like, I, with, with the little, like, turban and stuff, just given that look, it was... Oh, man. It's a Chaos, it's a chaos Sphere on the back, which is cool. And it's a mishmash. There's probably Dogie embedded in it somewhere, but it's just not yeah. evident. It's all it's all cut up. Brian Geisen method that Brian Geisen taught to Genesis Piorge. Oh, what? Like, there's like it's a holographic plane of Dogie. Oh, there's probably Dogie in there. Yeah, there's some probably some weird demon sigils in there too, knowing us. But uh, I, I, I mean, I I riddled mine with sigils. Like. So CMG just drew the wrath of. Uh, E8 co-editing and the forgotten happened and the group never... I don't know. Maybe the group did reform back together. I can't, I, believe I, I, he, never, I can't believe he's so petty to use magic against a freaking internet group. He didn't. It would have been better if he did. He reported the group and the group got taken down like there's some crazy terrorist organization. Yeah, he did some magic. Speaking of pussy. chaos magic groups going awry, it would be good to talk about Peter Carroll who wrote Lieber Null. Yeah, talk about Peter Carroll a bit. So, Lord knows I didn't do the research. It's funny because I believe Lieber Null came out around the time Peter Carroll left the Initiates of Thanateros. Initiates of Thanateros was a magical organization. Of course, it was Chaos Magic, uh, who was first announced in 78 but became a proper organization in 87 and is a fraternal magic society that has had some influence on the greater occult culture. Uh, Thanatos and Eros are combined to create Thanateros and represents the mysteries of Dead sex. and a- sex. Respectively, yeah. And Sex and sex. <laughs> they refer to themselves as the Pact. Uh, Ray Sherwin and Peter Carroll were 
pretty much the originators of the group, and they derived a lot of their philosophy and work from Austin Osmond Spare. They entitled their magazine The New Equinox to kind of do that thing where it's like, oh, we're the new Crowley people. The, everyone. Everyone has to do it. It's basically, and it became, they fused the Lemic Magic Tantra and the Sorceries of Zoss and Dao, which is Austin Osmond Spare and then the Wisdom of the East. So l- let's just take a quick little journey through Libra Null. We already talked about some of the first methods where it's like you have to learn how to stop your mind through breathing, through meditation, blah, blah, blah. And then they then they what, basically what, a, what about the difference between Libra Lux and Libra Nox? I, okay, so we're in okay, so Libra Lux and Libra Nox reminds me a lot of the Lux and Nox formula in Philema, which essentially you're learning to reach your holy guardian angel on the Lux formula, and then I believe once you reach your holy guardian angel, the Nox formula is the disillusionment of the ego into the angel or you know, it's a building up in the first stage to get to the top of the mountain. And then you're sort of like burning down your bridges and, you know, becoming one with your angel after that. Becoming the king and the queen on the tree well, yeah, of life. Yeah, so you, you climb up the mountain and then you then you wingsuit down. Yeah. Okay. But you, you become leave... the angel when you wingsuit down. You're more like wingsuiting up, but you're leaving your body behind. You're leaving your ego behind and only, yeah, you're wedding yourself to your angel completely and dissolving your old. So I don't know. That's that's the tarot formula is you're the princess who gets wed to the prince and then you become the king and the queen way above the abyss. But you have to dissolve your ego in that crossing of the abyss, which is what we talked about. Yeah. In the Philema episode and stuff. All right. Where but, were we again? Yeah, oh, but, the Lux and Knox formula in Libra Null. Yeah. Okay. I kind of stopped yelling so loud in the podcast. Oh, so I can Yeah, later. so we'll see when the mic is on, you talk loud. When the mic I, is yeah. off, I talk loud. <laughs> that's my nature, so... So Libra Lux is like, it teaches you some methods. It tells you there's, to reach psychological gnosis, which is a state of like no mind, hard to explain, but you reach it through meditation or through. Um, it's just where you know, like, it's like you achieve it on the, in the psychedelic state or when you're like r- really kicking ass at video games, you just know what's going on and what's going to happen. You're in the zone. The flow. You're tapped in. Maybe you're in the vortex. Who knows? Yeah. Gnosis is a is you're hard. You're in something. So you have to be able to reach these places of so-called gnosis, which Chaos Magic popularized in terminology. And they give you some methods, which we were joking about in the intro to the show. There's two methods of reaching gnosis, the inhibitory, inhibitory mode and the excitatory mode. So inhibitory mode is you can use the death posture, meditation, sleeplessness, fasting, exhaustion, gazing, sensory deprivation. You know, the shining. And then the excitatory mode, which is sexual excitation, emotional arousal, fear, anger, horror, pain, torture, fl- flagellation, dancing, drumming, chanting, walking the right way, excitatory, disinhibitory drugs, mild hallucinations, forced overbreathing, sensory overload. So all the stuff in midsummer. So you've got the inhibitory stuff and the excitatory. So you're supposed to push yourself into a state of, if in midsummer, okay, when she's going around the maypole, and she's going into that completely altered state. That's well, exactly what taking drugs also. That's exactly what they're talking about. That's exactly the state they're talking about. And then that's the state in which you work your magic or create your magical artifact. Oh boy. And then there's a section about conjuration and it basically says you can like summon things any way you want. You just got to have your associations down. Like you can summon chorus just by like doing a war dance and beating a drum dressed in like armor and shit or if you want to invoke saturn you would burn putrid incense and you know put yourself in a coffin and hold a bunch of nails in your hand or something or like cover yourself in dirt in a ditch yeah yeah you know like you do basically you do like a mock burial and it doesn't need to be a formalized ritual the way it it would be in the golden dawn or okay so like one thing i do that's like a chaos magic thing is every time i wash my hair i say by the rights of venus and then i wash my hair i would associate the sort of like you know using some sort of substance to beautify yourself as like an act of venus right am i right sure right right so here, an example of the invocation of the war god, reading from Libra Null, Peter Carroll. what I was talking about. The initiate stands in a pentagonal chamber lit by five red lamps. Five, corresponding with uh, Mars and Gabura. He's robed in crimson and the skin of a great bear or wolf. He is girded about with weapons of steel and an iron 
crown. Another he, another association with Mars. He has prepared his body by fasting, by rigors, by scourging, and by stimulants. He has constantly turned his mind to things of Mars during the preparations. He casts sulfur, oak, and acres resins into the thurible and anoints his body with tiger balm. He beats martial air upon a drum to open the temple or else fires a loud weapon into the air. It's pretty fun. He has banished all foreign influences from his mind that he may. Pentagram being preferred. So you're using all the correspondences that you'd read about in Libra 777. The Crowley's Libra 777 and basically creating your own ritual based on those associations and ideas and then you get a result from it by taking on this like you would cast your you would cast your spell in that state of mind and hopefully that god you were invoking corresponded to your intention so that's that's, uh, that's otherwise you might get funny results and that's yeah that's chaos magic baby i mean if we could stop there if we wanted to but um we're, we don't just stop there no we keep going till we got a solid hour of content <laughs> that's our thing nowadays and then there's the Libra Null and the so in Libra Null there's the Lux and the Nox formula. We're still I'm still scrolling through the Lux part. Let's get to the Nox. Yeah, the Lux is more of like transcendent kind of magic, like achieving gnosis, talking to to spirits to to fix yourself, psychic power cultivation. While uh, the Nox formula seems to be about getting your rocks off. Is that well? You pick a random belief. You know, and you just run with it for a while. You could do transmogorification, which I, I'm going to go on a limb here, I think, is when you, like, do stuff that repulses you until, like, you just get used to it until it, like, changes you. Like, if you don't like spinach, then you just eat a bunch of spinach kind of thing. And then there's alphabet desire. You want to talk about alphabet desire, Andrew? Because okay. this, this is a legit... This is a legit entry into the occult world from Chaos Magic, I think. I don't think anyone else came up with this first. Yeah, so, like... It's pretty this- cool. This literally threw me for a fucking loop when I read it when I was, like, 14. I don't know if it works, to be honest. And I tried it a little bit, but it, I don't know if it works. Okay, so, like, I couldn't get it until, like, I was 26, and then I actually, like, looked at it, and I'm like, oh, okay, this is what they're talking about. Basically, it's, like, this, like, almost like a Taoist freaking chi wheel or, like, mirror or whatever it is, and it's, uh, like, a chaos star in the center with the... It's got six, s- six it, planets associations. So yeah, you, you've got six planets, and they're broken up into the three alchemical gunas or whatever they're called. Uh, the tatwas. Uh, no, tatwas are the Indian things. No, these are. Uh, I'm dumb. I don't know. I think no, they're called the triplicity. Okay, so basically you got six sections. Okay. That are broken up into the alchemical triplicities. So broken up into three parts each. All right. Kind so, of important to know so that. So you have basically 18 different emotional states represented by planetary forces gone through the prism of the triplicity. So you have, uh, for Saturn, you have death, which is represented by release, destruction, and atrophy. So yeah. what's the difference between those three states? You've, um, got, you've got one that's associated with... One's, one's just fixed... One's active and one is mutable. So like, so you've got mercury, sulfur, and salt, yeah. respectively. Yeah, as your alchemical counterparts. All right, and then so explain that. So why is so in death? Why is release the mercurial? Why is destruction the active? And why is atrophy? Why is atrophy? Well, because in death, like the fixed thing is, it's obviously there's an atrophy. Atrophy is like, that's like baseline static death, right? The active side of, de- of death is the act of destruction. Something has to be destroyed for there to be a death. Okay. Okay. And release as the mercurial version of death because release could be a good thing. It's neither negative or, or positive. And it's- that factors into the Thanateros aspect of the initiates of Thanateros and relating sex to death is in the release aspect. All right, and on the opposite scale, you have the moon, which is like the other side of Saturn, or Saturn's the dark side of the moon in most representational schemes. You have sex, and this is broken down into lust, frustration, and disillusion. So which ones are which? So lust is the active, the active the, thing. F- the fiery part. Yeah, the fiery part of sex. 
Uh, frustration is the fixed part of sex. The the salt the, the, the salt. stagnant, and then uh, dissolution is the uh, the mercurial. Dissolution. So that's a lot like release and death. Yes. It's like you're dissolving into the other person. Yes. Which is a form of death, basically, of the ego, of the former ego. It's like you're dissolving into something bigger. Yes. And so the idea of this practice... The little death a, versus the big death, baby. ...is a good one. But, like, basically you're supposed to make your own little sigils in these wheels and then meditate on them until they literally correspond with um, the emotional state that they're supposed to represent and then what you're supposed to do is whenever you find yourself in a, one of these states that you don't like you just simply focus on the its opposite emotions sigil until it nullifies the energy so like if i'm dealing with like the thought of destruction i would try to transmute that by thinking of my lust sigil that I use to represent that emotion. Okay, let's. I want to talk about how on each of those six planets, the salt aspect or the passive or the the mutable. No, not the mutable. The, the fixed. The fixed aspect is considered like the negative one of all of them. It seems like. Yeah. And that that plays into chaos magic philosophy. I do want to talk about this from the psychic Bible once oh, again. Oh yeah, that would be that would totally fall in line with their scheme because the idea of chaos is like energy and motion like you need to be able to like create things out of the chaos out of the motion out of the energy so anything stagnant would be inherently bad in that scheme okay and so the one thing i really connected with in the psychic bible was it regarded our entire civilization as somewhat evil and this is how and it corresponds to the salt or the passive or the blocked aspect and here's how it basically says like we are constantly bullied into not being okay with our sexuality into thinking our sexuality is somehow wrong and in diverting it in ways to where we can't really enjoy it our whole civilization is built on this horrible horrible abomination that changed entertainment is not something that you participate in that you're active in it's something that you absorb passively and it's something that is meant to arouse you and seduce you, but you are only meant to experience it passively and from a distance. And so it speaks of a growth of basically like a porno culture where somebody can only really connect to their own desires uh, remotely through other people and through movies and through s simulated fake interfaces and this is why in chaos magic the enemy of chaos magic is glamour and illusion which is very much what the advertisement world is and so they're basically say that what advertising is doing is telling you that your sexuality is wrong but at the same time basically cock teasing you yeah so they're hijacking your sexuality as well as yeah the, uh, making shaming you for having it and shaming you for having it and giving you psychic blue balls on uh, on a whole other not a physiological level but on a psychic level and then that builds up a distance between you and your own soul which manifests as you becoming nervous and afraid of your own desires and the objects that associated with your own desire and when i read that i was like dude this is exactly why these tech giants are like okay i don't let my kids use this stuff and well some of them are defecting and they're like yeah, this stuff we designed is evil. It's made to addict you and in a way that leaves you unsatisfied and wanting more. And we're all just well, these... Well, that's, that's not a bug. That's a feature. Yeah, that's a feature. Based on the philosophy of the Psychic Bible, like, say what you want about the detritus and the art and the weird shit and, like, the art has to be gross, which I kind of agree with. It is there to push you beyond the boundaries into a realm of actual experience and, like to break the conventions of like this like through the window pornographic window shopping culture that can never reach actual union with its with its object of ecstasy or worship and so you're encouraged to go out and find that object of ecstasy and worship and join with it regardless of what happens to your ego with abandon in chaos magic and that that very much is something you need to be willing to do to find your true will i think as well 
So it's all in the soup. I, I can't. We can't just stand here and be like, "Oh, chaos magic is the way." Because I spent like ten years dithering in and out of it, trying to figure out what there was there and what 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 was the takeaway from it. And yeah, at the end of the day, the the assumption that like it's eclectic magic, like that's a good way to pigeonhole. Yeah, it. it's it's magic without like a specific paradigm or really is without a goal or a lodge or a lineage it's sort of using the actual techniques regardless of system purpose or intent and i mean that was the whole thing about it being so sinister was that like you're just allowed to do what you're gonna want to do with magic and not have to go through like four years of learning how to like be a good little occultist before you can actually start doing occultism and austin austin spare was a contemporary of alistair crowley uh he was yeah he would be yeah roughly around the same age in fact I, his works were in the equinox like austin austin spare's uh, drawings were in the equinox for some of the openings and he even talked shit on them it was just like yeah i just I make all these cool symbols without even, like, having to look them up. I just make them. <laughs> Let's see. There's a quote where he's talking about the AA system and... Others praise ceremonial magic, he says in the Book of Pleasure, and are supposed to surrender much ecstasy. Our asylums are overcrowded. The stage is overrun. Is it by symbolizing we become the symbolized? Were I to crown myself a king that I should be king? Rather, should I be an object of disgust or pity? These magicians, who whose insincerity is their safety, are but the unemployed dandies of the brothels. It's basically saying, like, just because you put a crown on your head don't make you a king, buddy. Just because you say you're the you're the prophet of the new Aeon don't mean jack shit to me, buddy. It's sort of like he's spitting in Alistair Curley's face, and then... This is, this, is, this is actually from an article written by Jason Lube. It's really cool. And it says here that Crowley remembered Austin Osmond Spare... Austin Osmond Spare fondly. The two were liked lovers, likely lovers for a time, he says. Probably. As memorialized in Crowley's The Twins, in which he compares himself and Spare to the incestuous gods Horus and Set, respectively. Woo! Should I read it? I don't know if I want to read Crowley's poetry, but... Uh... Yeah, you might as well. See how subtly I writhe, strange runes and unknown sigils. I trace in the trance that thrills us. Death, how lithe, how blithe! Are these male incestuous vigils? Ah, this is the spasm that kills us. Wherefore I solemnly affirm this twofold oneness at the term. Asar on Asi did beget. Horus twin brother unto Set. Now Set and Horus kiss to call the soul of the unnatural. Forth from the dusk, then nature slain. Let's the begone be born again. So that's about humping. That's that's pretty gay. Yeah, it's a little yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I'm not doing that with you, Andrew. Sorry. Yeah, that's that's uh, that works for me. Unless it unless it means we can start Scientology and uh, to number two and make a bajillion dollars and be worshipped as deities, then I I still probably wouldn't do it. Sorry, Andrew. Yeah, you're not my type. Yeah, man, you're. I'm just. Well, you know, I'm I'm a heterosexual male, and that's what Genesis Peorage said as well. Genesis PR just fell in love with Lady J and they just were so in love they wanted to dress like each other and do the same stuff and there was like why don't we just swap genders because we're just so in love with each other and fuck the body it don't yeah, mean nothing they were like the actual non-binary people yeah but like they were doing it way before it was cool which and made it cool before it but was now it's now it's just mainstream yeah but they're, yeah chaos they're... chaos magic is you know gender is not the most important thing in the universe that's cool about it you know you can be a magician no matter what you don't you're not bound to some of the conservative uh traditionalist notions that are stuck in you know golden dawn stuff blah blah we talked a little bit about this yeah in the in the old gods episode how like um if you read uh, what's her name dion fortune it's just like she's, she'll talk about like the dark religion and the dark continent almost the same way that What's his name, dude? What's his whose name? Tentacles. Oh, H.P. Lovecraft. Yeah, Lovecraft. So I, I, I can't let this. Okay, so we're getting kind of long in the episode here. I just wanted to bring up some some gossip about Chaos Magic before we close it out. I'm sure there's more Chaos Magicians we could have brought up. Like, if you want to see some Chaos Magic symbolism in, in some music videos, go watch Ugly Boy by uh, 
Diant word. Diant word, and it's full of chaos magic symbolism. Who knows what they're getting down on? And then there was that guy who like initiated me into magic, who wrote uh, "Cultivating Madness," which was another work on really easy magical techniques. It's like it cuts out all the bullshit and goes straight into magic techniques. If you go on 4chan like I do and go in the paranormal section, you'll see an occult thread and they'll post uh, on a mega account all the different books and PDFs. And one of the things you can find there is what Andrew was talking about is bare bones magic for beginners. Yeah, it's Cultivating Madness is the, the name of it. But it's I'm having trouble clicking. Oh, there. Bare bones for magic. And what it is is... It was actually written by the guy I met who initiated me into magic. Frater Faust. Yeah, Frater Faust. Uh, Jeremy Sherrard. Uh, Look who it's dedicated to. Poke Runyon, Simon Magus. Yeah. I think. I hope I didn't make a mistake there. Yeah, but um, anyways, Isn't this guy that... was... The, the funniest part about this guy was like, okay, so he dressed in like uh, trench coats and like he wore a fedora and he looked like is if me and you were to like do Dragon Ball Z fusion, you know, like bright ass red hair with freckles but his hair is like super duper like curly like just just freaking like you know he had like natural jerry curls and like he just sounds like one good looking man no and like the funniest laugh ever it's just like a <laughs> it's just like really funny man like, you're burning this guy no dude the guy's great because like he set me on a magical path that i wouldn't have been on and now he's like and i i only recognized uh his work because of the butterfly knife that I remember him pulling out a couple times. That's like right there on the on the cover. And it's a very sincere, well written, dense but not too dense volume about magic. Here's the thing about mag- chaos magic: it eventually falls apart in some way or another. That's partially what chaos magic is. Is you know to answer your question from earlier, Andrew, Burning Man is a temporary autonomous zone where you can just be wild and crazy, and that's partially what chaos magic is. But, but is it chaos magic? Oh my god. Well. Let's answer that question here uh, by looking at some some gossipy stuff. I guess the the question is: Is that qu- chaos magic? Is Burning Man chaos magic? Well, is chaos magic Burning Man? Well, let's not talk about is Burning Man chaos magic. Let's talk about if ice magic. What about ice magic? magic? Now, this is I'm just bringing this up because it's gossipy and fun and strange right, to know story about. Time. Story time. Because, you know, I think we're running kind of long. Let's just wrap it up after this. So, no, okay. that pause in there so you gotta... What's the story of the ice magic? Well, here... Yeah, what the hell is the ice magic? In the it, early... sounds, it sounds like like fire or lightning, but different. So, the initiates of Thanateros, um, to whom even William Burroughs was initiated near the end of his life, to whom Peter Carroll was, you know, the progenitor, Phil Hine, who wrote Condensed Chaos, he was a member, Genesis Peorage was a member, Grant Morrison was a member for crying out loud. For some reason, it lists Austin Osmond Spare, but I don't think he was a member. It was a it's a prominent chaos magic organization. Well, in the 90s, it had a bit of a schism, which interestingly seems to echo throughout the timescape. If you ask me, and it reminds me of very much what we're seeing on the internet now, and even in the paranormal sections of 4chan. So let's break it down. What happened? Um, there was a schism between Frater UD, who is one of the high officers in the IOT, and Frater Stokasikos, I hope I'm saying that right, which is Peter Carroll. And what happened was is there was a new initiate named Helmet that got introduced. Let me see if I can read it. This is from Anubis Rex. I'll start. I'll read his words directly, and, and, and you can hear it for yourself. Actually, there are Z-List who know the whole story. I was an initiate of Epic Temple in Los Angeles when the MT was Kenneth Stone. The problem with Frater UD was not that his case had a tremendously difficult agenda, <laughs> rather that Helmut, a highly advanced Qigong expert, advanced magician, was creating a sub-cult within the IOT. The IOT was not opposed to in innovative magical creations, nor was the IOT interested at all in dictating to Frater UD concerning his magical goals. For sure, there was substantial interest in Helmut's abilities. He could, after all, raise his chi to a high level of circulation, and hence had developed extraordinary sexual and magical powers. His training program was based upon a strict program of activity, often spanning many hours or at least some opine days without sleep so he was just like locked in trances for days 
Magical exercises combined with rigorous training period created an accelerated experience, however stressful. The Ice Mage was not actually the problem. It was the underpinnings of dictatorial control, which created a fiasco for the IoT. Helmet was a strong-willed person, but he did create a likely vignette of animosity. As Ian Reed and Soro Benavide explained, their stay was not in keeping with magical freedom. Soro Benavide, who is probably one of the most gnarly female magicians in the world, was attacked by Helmet when she decided enough was enough. As the Soro was walking out, Helmet told her that she would have cancer in her uterus, and he waved his hand, causing, causing Soro Benavide's nose to bleed. The incident coupled with an increasing anarchy, which interacted with egregoric tendencies of the IoT European contingent, made necessary for the Magi within the IoT to deal with it. Fratter UD had no special desire to upset the apple cart. He merely wanted a way independent of the egregoric wave of the AOT. Carol literally had no choice but to excommunicate Fratter UD after a vote of the pact to determine there was no other choice. So that was a split that happened in the IOT. I thought that was very interesting. Supposedly this guy Helmet had like super Qigong powers and like it said there he would meditate and like totally still for days at a time and he was like a little Nazi and they would uh, meditate on large bodies of ice and draw power from meditating on these large bodies of ice and send that energy through curses and crazy stuff and I just thought that was a fun little fun little story to share about the sorts of blow-ups and divisions that happen in Chaos Magic, which seem to be built into the system in some way. Yeah, you basically they say, okay, there's no rules. So they say that there's no rules, and so, like, of course when there's no rules, there's no rules against other people creating rules. Well, the rule that says there's no rules allows rules to be made, and that usually the asshole who's making rules is a Nazi, so, you know... Also, it Otherwise, says... Otherwise, it's just emergent, I you guess know? Frater UD was also a longtime member of Fraternus Saturni, which is a German uh, neo-pagan group that probably is a little related. I don't know, man. There seems to be... I won't say, but that's interesting to find that overlap. But it just gets to back to the Star Wars Dark Side of the Force kind of thing. It's like, it's not one thing or the other. It's how you use it. What is Chaos Magic? Well, it's Burning Man. It's Burning Man. <laughs> it's Liberal's body. It's cultivating madness. It's Austin Osmond's spare. It's Brian Geisen's cut up method. It's really hard to say what chaos magic is, but we hope we've given you a good oversight. It's basically an intersection between different systems because even Phil Hine at the end is, was like, you know, if you want to do goetic magic, you know, you, you just got to commit yourself to that paradigm for a while. And, and why don't you just commit yourself to a paradigm for a while to learn its mysteries and that's what you were encouraged to do in chaos magic was to learn these different systems and then mix and match is, is disinfo chaos magic uh that publication yeah it had it published some good chaos magic stuff jason louv and richard grant, metzger published grant stuff morrison. there grant morrison had stuff in there yeah he's all about chaos magic so chaos magic is just diy magic it borrows a lot from alistair crowley and hermetic magic but it also borrows from buddhism and shamanism and anything could be considered chaos magic if it's eclectic enough and that's not really a great definition but we're so, not going to say much more okay than that. okay so it's not just dark neo-paganism not it's really not gothic neo-paganism there's a lot of things you could say about chaos magic and they're all probably true to some degree chaotic all right well i think that about wraps it up right i think that about wraps it up we don't got much more to talk about so I mean, uh yeah get out there and cause some chaos i guess get out there and learn to meditate on sigils and see what weird stuff happens and make, then... make a make an order and then like allow some weirdo in and then you know have to like take him down yeah i mean we've 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 dealt with that kind of shit it happens all the time yeah like... that's what magic orders are yeah it's all about like smacking down the next wannabe alistair crowley because <laughs> they're everywhere all right well that's the whole rabbit yeah eat carrots shoot lasers just <laughs>